Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're going to look at flightplandatabase.com, which is one of the uh, flight planning tools for Flight Simulator 2020, although you can also use them for other flight simulators. So when going to the page, you've got several options. So the first thing is that you can search for already um, scheduled flights or already created flight plans, because you can see that there are the most recent flight plans are being shown below, as you can see. So for example, here's one uh, from Amsterdam to Brussels. Uh, so several other ones uh, from what looks like the south part of uh, South America to uh, somewhere in Portugal. And several other ones like John of K to Switzerland somewhere. So all kind of cool. So what you can do is you can cre either do, I'd say the quick plan by punching in the ICAO codes or flight or air port names here so let me do that and then click on fly and it will quickly generate the map this will show you several things right it shows you the basic altitude profiles so the ascent, uh, the ascent rate uh, and speed the cruise altitude and the descent rate and speed uh, which options are being used and you can see the nets um, pay cuts uh, for those who saw the earlier video for the uh, other flight planning tool, the online flight plan database.com uh, one, know what it is. Uh, for those who missed it, uh, NAT stands for North Atlantic Tracks, uh, which are daily high altitude transatlantic routes between Western Europe and the eastern coast of North America. And it's used for providing consistent uh, separation between uh, the aircrafts and pay cuts, which isn't an option in the, uh, the, in the other uh, flight planning uh, tool, stands for Pacific Organized Track System and it tracks all the high altitude Pacific routes between Eastern Asia and the Western coast uh, of the US or of North America to be honest, completely. So Besides that, we can see the low and the high altitudes, and we will we will focus on them uh, a little bit later on this video. It has to do with the minimum and maximum altitude, uh, which is being used, and you will find the routes. So here, in this case, we're flying from Amsterdam to Seattle, and you can see all the different uh, routes uh, being displayed here. There are some other options here. For example, you can show the temperature, uh, you can see the clouds, in that case you want to hide the temperature uh, the precipitation and the winds so there are a lot of things which you can enable uh, because they're not enabled by default right so um, if you scroll down you will get a full overview of the uh, waypoints we're gonna visit you can see okay hey what's the type APT it stands for our point fix it's for fix and the B beacons, uh, latitude and longitudes, four channels, and you can see the altitude profile. Uh, I haven't been able to use this one successfully. I'm not sure why. I would expect it would show you the the altitude, uh, at least the the, the profile, um, but it's not. Another thing you can do is you can click on the link as I just did, which gives you, in this case, the information about the airport. Uh, so you can see the ICAO code, the uh, region and state, the time zone, uh, the plans which are uh, available, uh, the elevation of the airport, the location, the number of runways, uh, sunset, and you can find information about the runways available. Besides the runways being available, there's also the approach and nav aids, which are the uh, navigation um, options you can use to uh, use during your approach, right? So you've got the DME, the distance measure equipment. You've got the IM, to be honest, I don't know what it stands for. So we'll figure that out and we'll post in the text in the video. Uh, localized ILS, uh, glide scopes, and the MM, also one I'm not familiar with, but again, I will put them in the video in the text below this video. So you know what it is and you can see them for almost all the uh, runways and here's some some nice drawings right so with the uh, navigation how you can approach the airport and I'll hear also the options to see the uh, temperatures clouds participation and the winds and below that you can see them 
uh, also older than only in a much uh, smaller view. Then we will have the Demeter, right, which is the, the, uh, the weather information from the airport. So what's the uh, time it was observed, uh, but also what was the observations uh, being made, and uh, what was the reporting uh, weather station. So it could be useful. And also the TAF, right, which is the, uh, let's say, the forecast of the weather. It's also being displayed here with a lot of information. Like, okay, hey, there's uh, uh, rain expected. Uh, there are some scattered clouds at 1,500 feet from uh, 12 UTC onto the 10th until 12 UTC until the, the, the 11th. So I can see a lot of information here which you can use doing your flight or doing your flight planning. Uh, on the bottom part, there are the frequencies which you can use. So you can see the clearance frequency, departure, ground power, etc. So you have all the information which you need to have from the airport. And the same thing is, of course, applicable to the departing airport. So you can also click on it and you can see the same information. In our flight plan, this information is also stored, right? We can see the departing airport, but we can also see the meter information. And as we, we've seen uh, in the previous uh, how-to, you can copy this information and you can use one of the meter decoders to decode what's uh, being displayed here if you're not familiar with uh, this information. So I will uh, show that one. So let me go to... Uh Meet. If you search for meter decoder, you will find several ones. Uh, one of the ones I'm using a lot is the WX Now uh, one, but there are several other ones. And you can, uh, let me zoom in a bit, you can uh, paste the meter and then say paste, which will give you the decoded text, which will say, okay, hey, the winds, the visibility, the temperatures, the altimeters, and some remarks if they are applicable. So that's kind of cool. Here also you can see the, the TAF option, which is uh, the forecast. And one of the things I like, right, we just go to meter decoder, but here's also an option within flight plan database to decode it automatically for you, which will show you, I would say, the transcription of we, what we just did with uh, meter decoder only in a different uh, view. And it explains it pretty well. So it says, okay, hey, what does the Q stands for, what was the temperature and dew point, what was the uh, scattered clouds. So it really helps you understand this piece. And you can s do the same thing for the TAF. So it gives you all the information and then broken up in, I would say, the tokens from the TAF information. Departing runways, we can see all the information because we didn't specify a specific runway. And the same thing we see for the uh, destination airport. And again, here we see the approach navigates again. And you will find uh, the popular uh, alternatives. So in this case, it suggested the specific uh, route, but if you want to fly another route, there are some other ones which are di being displayed here, which you can also select. Uh, so that's kind of cool, right? So this is, I would say, the quick way. So let's go uh, back to the main page. Uh, the other option you can do is you can use the planner option, option on the top, which will give you, I would say, the same option. Cool thing is that you can uh, see the uh, route selected prior to creating the route uh, on the right side, and you can select or deselect the options. And here's also where the low and high airways are being displayed, right? The low is between zero feet and 18,000, highs between 18,000 and 45,000 feet. Uh, these options uh, can be populated, right? I can change them if I want, but by default they're they're filled in or they're pre-populated for you. And keep in mind that this flight planner can only be used in uh, for flight simulating, so you can't use it for real flights. The other option you can do is uh, once you have, I would say, an overview of the uh, of your flight, or you've got a route in mind, and you put you collected all the nav aids and um, you want to validate it here, you can copy them and paste them here. And you can, you need to uh, place them like, okay, hey, for example, uh, Iham and then a space, then the following uh, SID or star point, uh, 
and that will let's say draft the map here and once you've done you can click on go and it will create the flight plan but for now we're gonna use the route generator so we're gonna press and go it will generate the route and will of course result in the same thing as we just did a few minutes ago this part we did skip it but what you can do is you can download the flight plans here so that's cool because you can use the flight plans and uh, directly load them into the flight simulator 2020 tool the rest is all the same so it contains a lot of information uh, which can be used uh, during the flight but also prior to the flight so this is where or how to ends right we're gonna not really do this flight maybe in the future we're gonna do it uh, so keep an eye on my channel if you like this video then consider to use the like button this will help youtube um, i would say marking my channel as more popular which will help me uh, in growing my channel because it's one of my goals for this year uh, if you've got questions or comments then put, put them below the video and if you want to see more of these videos and want to stay up to date about new videos being posted then consider to subscribe to my channel Thanks for watching and see you next time.